All right, <clears throat> Grand Rising, everyone, is Shay Seeking again, and we're back with um, another episode of This is Not Your Mama's Bible Study. Um, and we're going to go ahead and go into um, the book of Isaiah, and I think we're going to do 44, and then we're probably going to do 45, um, leaving off of what we did in Revelations the other day. Um, I was listening to one of my uh, fellow soul siblings and Facebookers, <laughs> um, and um, he mentioned something made me want to go through the whole chapter. So um, I'm going to go ahead and read this because, again, um, since we are, okay, since it, it seems as though we are, again, in sync, right, in, in one, uh, in like-mindedness, um, that we are helping each other figure out these things and put these things back into places in these, into place in these times. So again, um, this time I did go ahead and pre-read the chapter just to make sure that we're on track and that I'm seeing what I thought I was seeing here. And again, the reason why I'm sticking to these topics is because it seems as though at this time, this is what my heart wants to uh, focus on. This is what I feel like the spirit has me looking into at this time because it has to do with someone maybe that needs to hear it or um, again, likewise for me. So um we're going to go ahead and read this really quick because I feel like it does kind of piggyback off of or have something to do with or correlates with what happens in Revelations, even though that will be at two different times. You know, um, again, this is why I'm doing this so that I can also get input from others um, that seek the that uh, seek the truth and read the word. OK, so again, this is not a religious channel. I don't deal with religion. I'm someone who studies the word. Okay, and then I just see correlations with things that are going on in this time because I feel as though this is a gift that has been bestowed upon me. Um, again, there are people that do it at different levels, but again, there are many of us out there that are seeing something else when it comes to this text. And it's what we really were supposed to look at, but I think that um, the way that we really were supposed to look at it, but I think that churches and religion have um, destroyed that and given us a false narrative notion as to what's going on. And so um, the All Father or the Elohim have been gifting us and getting us prepared so that we will be able to prophesy and dream dreams and say these things and, and see the word for what it really is. And that's something that's going to happen within you, okay? Or around you or whatnot. Because again, there are ancestors, guides, and, you know, around that are helping us um, see these things and carry these things through. So we're in chapter 44. Um, and it says, God comforted the church um, with his promises. Okay. Again, the church can be the body. The body of Christ could be also a group of people. The church can be a group of people. It doesn't necessarily have to be a temple made with man's hands or even when i'm thinking oh even when i just thought that temple made with man's hands could be something that is a what someone may call a clone or an uh a possibly an ai or something that's of that nature because again if they're gonna um try to put their throne up in the heavens as high as the throne of god then you know you would have to think that too that they would be trying to create some type of beings trans beings or something like this uh transhumanism or something again we're just using these terms just to get people with different ideas or ideologies of what what i'm trying to bring forth so again that these days there could be some people that may be um fixed in a way that would be able to um try to copy what the most high or the source would be able to do with his creation already. Meaning it's already built into certain mar markers and makeups of your DNA, okay? Um, where they will try to create people maybe with things that are going on right now that they want to issue onto people um, and put in your arm possibly, okay? Um, they, that might be a way to alter someone Okay, and that will be also then the mind would be a temple that's made with man's hands, which can be controlled possibly by some of these towers that you see going up in your neighborhoods and at the stoplights and in the stores and things of this nature. Okay, <laughs> so let's go ahead. It says, yet now um, hear, O Jacob, my servant in Israel, whom I have chosen. Thus saith the Lord that made thee, 
and form thee from the womb, which, okay, so again, this is like from birth, okay? And again, so for some reason, I'm thinking star seeds here, people that were born around the 80s or so, I think that these people are the people that are going to be bring. they say millennials or whatnot, but again, and I think they, the millennials might even be talking about those that would be born in the 90s, possibly some people think, but what I'm saying is star seeds, I'm pretty sure, um, from, from my research, I remember it was around the 80s. Okay, and so, um, okay, form thee from the womb, which will help thee fear not, O Jacob, my servant, and thou just run who I have chosen. Now, when I even just thought about that right now, you notice that a lot of leaders that have come and, and they may have been utilized in a certain sense, but then they woke up at some point in time. So we'll just use that term, okay, layman's term. Um, and they woke up at some point in time, maybe even around there before they got 40. I mean, if, even think of, you know, uh, Yeshua in his 30s. And then, you know, you think about all all of the greats or the, the so-called leaders that have been brought before us. Um, they usually pass away somewhere between their 30s and 40s, um, their late 30s and 40s. Um, and again, because I feel like there's something that happens with us Um naturally something that would be a right uh, like a right of passage okay if you were in a tribe or something still but it's naturally organically going to come along with us and i think that that's what this so-called awakening is um uh but anyways that just came to mind i just wanted to share that um because again it's just something that it's just something to think about again i'm never here to tell you what it is or what it ain't i'm simply sharing what it looks like to me okay because we all have different journeys, different times, different speeds, um, you know, different lifestyles that we've lived, different things we've seen and experienced. And again, that's to each his own. So it says, for I will pour out, I will pour water upon him that is thirsty and floods. Apologies. Okay. Um. Pour water upon him that is thirsty and floods upon the dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon thy seed. Okay, so again, this is making me think that this spirit, maybe not even a Holy Spirit, but this spirit um, upon the seed. Um, so the, the children possibly, right? Um, or even, you know, seeds is something that you can feed to birds as well. Um, just saying. <laughs> and my blessings upon thine offspring. Okay, so again, now, so we're talking about offspring or that which springs off. Um, could also be talking about children, you know, or even not even children, but those are not, not followers. I don't call people followers, those that walk with this particular person. It could be talking about that as well <clears throat> because it did break it up into two different, you know, uh, sectors. And they shall uh, spring up as among the grass, as willows by the water courses. One shall say, I am the Lord's, and another shall call himself by the name of Jacob, and another shall subs uh, subscribe. Yes, ain't that funny that that word is there? <laughs> and we're just talking about followers? Wow. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, I thought it was scribe, but no, it says subscribe with his hand unto the Lord. And uh, surname himself by the name of Israel. Okay. Okay. Surname himself by the name of Israel. Hmm. Thus saith the Lord, the King of Israel. Okay, so this is saying the Lord, the King of Israel. Okay. And his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts. So his Redeemer is the Lord of hosts. Okay, I am the first, I am the last, and beside me there is no God. Okay, um, this is almost making me think like, again, because I'm, I know that there are multiple gods in the Bible. There's not just one. Okay, and this is something I feel like we're figuring out right now and that everybody is not the same. There's different species or creatures and things like that. And cre create creature just means something that was created, I believe. Okay, which again, a mixed multitude or mixed race or grafted in or all of these things could create different so-called races um 
And it says here that, uh, okay, so besides me, there is no other um, God. Okay, so again, this is a very uh, pivotal uh, thing here. Um, yeah. You know, um, I do get a, f mm. we'll just keep going because again, I, okay, I don't want to go too off, veer off too far. I am the first, I'm the last and beside me there is no God and who as I shall call and I shall declare it. And just thinking Israel and Isis, you know, I'm just getting a feminine presence here. And who as I shall call and shall declare it and set it in order for me since I appointed the ancient people. Okay. Again, it's, it's, it is making me think ancient people or a time of antiquity. Um, again, ancient Egypt. Um, there's a difference between Egypt, modern day Egypt and ancient Egypt. Um, I believe that there was a form of ancient Egypt. I've done videos on this in the past um, here in the Americas. So again, um, okay. And the things that are coming and shall come, let them shoe unto them. Fear ye not. Okay, so it says, let them shoe onto them. Okay, so I'm guessing this is saying, let them be able to show these things. Okay. Fear ye not, neither be afraid. Okay, because I, I feel like sometimes in the text it's saying not to do these old things. But it, this God is basically saying that someone can shoe these things. So it's, you know, that's what I'm saying about just being in the moment, in the in in that uh chapter and just really going in on it you know and there's some master teachers when it comes to the biblical text and they can go in and out here and there um but the way i do it is just this way it's kind of like storytelling in a sense how our ancestors you know would have did it and they probably would have did it that way too everybody has their own spin on it and that's just what it is because everybody just our visuals are different we just see different we hear different again okay <clears throat> let them show unto them Fear not, neither be afraid. Have not I told thee from that time? Okay. Have not I told thee from that time and have declared it? Question mark. Ye even my witness. Is there a God besides me? <clears throat> okay. So it's saying ye are even my witness. So again, this is... um. From that time. Okay, so hold on. Let me, maybe we're going to get a little bit deeper <laughs> understanding in a second, but it's saying that, you know, and declared it, and ye even are my witness. So this witness would have been there, and which is making me also think of the feminine aspect, the wife of God, that mother portion, or Isis, or um, Hathor. You know, I'm just thinking different, you know, uh, of things that I've read that, that just seems like this, okay? Um, but if anything, the, the wife of God, possibly, and even, you know, brings me back to Ishtar in Sumeria. Is there a God beside me? Yea, there is no God. Okay. I know not any. Okay. So this, this, this person, you know what I'm saying? And this is just sometimes kind of deep when you read it because, you know, it really, this is what they're saying. It, this person is saying, um, there is no, it, there's the cross thing here. Um, one of the symbols in the Bible, God, and it says, I know not any. So I don't know. This is also making me think of like a female aspect of the mother God, you know, the one that would be actually really be giving birth to nations. You know, um, <clears throat> I don't know. It's just reminding me of something here. Um, they that make a graven image are all of them vanity. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and then again, I would advise to look at what a graven image is. Because it doesn't necessarily have to just mean a bad, ugly, or nasty image. It can also mean 
something else. So again, I, I, I try not to do etymology on here anymore because I don't, you know, for, for time purposes and not to get too off track because sometimes I get too lost in that. So, <clears throat> and they're uh, delectable things, okay? All right. So again, they that make a graven image are all of them vanity. You know, it's almost reminding me of like some kind of like uh, even like the Oscars or something like that. Like, I mean, I'm, I'm just saying what I feel like it, it's saying here. Um, Like even like, a, you know, any type of uh, statue or some kind of thing that would be molded. And again, this is just what the word is saying. Right. OK. And their de delectable things shall not profit. And they are their own witnesses. They see not, nor know that they may be ashamed. <clears throat> who have formed a God or a molten, or molten a graven image that is profitable for nothing. Okay. Behold, all his fellows shall be ashamed and the workmen they are of men let them all be gathered together let them stand up yet they shall fear and they shall be ashamed together you know and i'm even thinking idol worship and stuff like that it could also be like just any other kind of statues and again i'm just saying that this is what this particular god is saying to some particular people at this point in time and actually the people that he's talking to is yet now here oh jacob my servant and israel whom i have chosen that's who this is talking to okay so again <clears throat> it may even be just talking about